Hey, what's up guys? So this is the Feo Tech Pocket. You may notice that it's a very similar design to the DJI Osmo Pocket, but this is by all means not a comparison video. This is a full review of this device itself. Essentially, this is a six axis stabilized camera, which is a pocket size one with an 8.5 megapixel lens, which has a Sony sensor. So what I'm gonna do is give you a unboxing, set it up, go through the menu items, the different functionalities of this, and then give you a full review of the different videos and picture qualities that this can take as well. So let's just get straight into it. Okay guys, let's open this up. So you've got the quick start guides in there. What else? You have the warranty card. So you have the carry case inside here. You have the USB-C charging cable and then also a wrist strap for the carry case. And then finally, you have the Feiyotech pocket itself. So as you can see, it's a very palm sized, pocket sized, six axis stabilized gimbal. On the right hand side, you have the power on button there. On the front, you have the shoot video button or take a picture button there. And then the mode button on the right hand side. On the left, you have the USB-C charging port and a micro SD card slot. On the bottom, you have a quarter inch screw port for a tripod. Now, the other thing that this comes with, it actually comes with a tripod as well that you can connect the pocket to, and then also a smartphone mount as well. Just remember, there is an additional accessory if you wanted to have your smartphone mounted to the back of the pocket. So that is an additional cost. I'll have a link in the description below for that as well. But ultimately, this is USB-C powered and that gives you roughly around four and a half hours of shooting, which I think is great. Now, just talking a little bit about the functionality on this. Now, it does go up to 4K at 60 frames per second, but because of that, you're going to require a very fast micro SD card for it to read and write to. And the standard ones that read up to maybe 100 megabytes per second may not be able to record at that frame rate. So what I recommend is if you are getting a micro SD card, then get one like this. This is the SanDisk Extreme and it goes up to 160 megabytes per second for reading and 60 megabytes for writing. So let me go ahead and open this and put this inside and then we will cover off some of the uh, different modes on the pocket. So let me go ahead and power this on. There we go. So by default, as you can see, it's there on 1080p at 60 frames per second. So there's a few different modes in here. All you have to do is swipe to the left and you'll be able to change the options from here. So video, if you just select video, as you can see with 1080p, you can go up to 120 frames per second. If I swipe down here, you can do 2.7K or 4K there. And at 4K, you can do 60 frames. So I'm gonna do as much recording as I can on the highest resolution to showcase its capabilities. Now, if we go to photo, you can turn countdown on and off, but it will have the ratios from 16 to nine to 4.3 or even 3.2. So you can change that as well. If we go down, you also have a slow motion recording mode. So you can slow motion record at four times the less speed on 1080p, twice as slow on 4K and eight times as slow on 720p. So depending on what you want to do, I will showcase some examples on this. Then you also have time-lapse, you can do hyperlapse, motion lapse, or the generic time lapse mode. And then you have panorama. So you can do a 180 degree panorama shot, a 3x3 or a 2x2. And I will showcase some examples of this as well. So what I'm going to do is just keep it on video at 4K 60 frames. Now, if you swipe to the right, this is where you can cycle through all of the videos and pictures you've taken. Obviously, I haven't taken any at the moment. If you swipe down from the top, you can go through the different menu items like setup, display, pro mode, the brightness of the screen. If you swipe up, then these are the different axis modes that you can change from all following, pan following, tilting and sport mode. So if I select this one, for example, you can see it flips to the selfie camera. So there is myself. If you go there, you can recenter it, I flip it back. I will be showcasing some selfie videos as well. Switch to different modes. You have pan mode, face tracking mode, follow mode, and finally all follow mode. Likewise, if you press the M button, you'll be able to cycle through those different modes that I've just showed you a lot quicker, like so. If you double tap this, you can recenter the gimbal. 
Now the last thing I want to show you is to connect this to the pocket. You download the Feiyu Cam app, turn on the Wi-Fi, and to get the Wi-Fi show up, you hold down the shoot button, and then you'll see the Wi-Fi code appear on there, which starts with VCAM. There we go, VCAM. It's now connected. And then you go back, hit connect pocket. And there you have it. So you have the option to hit that camera live button there. And now you have the live view. So I can actually control the pocket by moving it left and right through here. As you can see, I can go up. The majority of people will basically use this to see the album, so all the photos and videos you've taken. So if I go back on here, I'll take a picture. I'll take a picture of myself. And there you have. And then you can download this directly to your phone from here. All right, guys, so now I'm going to go take this out shoot some videos, take some pictures, maybe check out some of the other modes and give you guys a full review on that. Okay guys, so let's start off with 4K video at 60 frames per second. So here I am going hiking with my sister. So as you can see, the footage is fairly smooth and I'm going down some steps here to see how shaky it might be. Now these are very uneven steps, so I was expecting it to be a little bit shaky, but overall, I'm actually quite impressed. It's smooth and it's maintained its stability on that front. So in this next clip, I'm moving across these stepping stones. So my strides are quite large and overall it's very smooth. It does move quite quickly onto the next step, but that's expected. It maintains it quite well and I can get across this with some very nice footage as compared to using something like my phone, for example. Now, obviously I'd like to test running with uh, gimbals like this. Now, as you can see, very very tiny bit of shaking there but overall it's maintained it very well and it's pretty stable if you are looking at people in the distance you can see how stable it actually is and even when i pan to the right it does a good job now when i'm walking at night time and it's pitch black i just wanted to showcase this that in terms of the video quality it is very dark and this doesn't have a specific night mode so i wouldn't recommend to use this at night time because as you can see you can hardly see the street so i wouldn't recommend to use this for very dark conditions or nighttime video recording now in this example i wanted to test out the 1080p at 120 frames per second and as you can see with the video quality it is very sharp at that frame rate now when i am panning left right down and so on you can see it maintains the quality very well and in terms of the stabilization it's also still very smooth so i'm pretty happy with that if i was going to do a lot of editing and going out hiking then i would use this resolution at this frame rate and here's an example of the same frame rate with the uh, selfie mode flipped over so when there are people in the image the quality you can see the flare from the sun i think it's done an excellent job in maintaining that quality as well in terms of the video so i'm just walking and it is very smooth now moving over to the object tracking now this mode it can actually move the gimbal itself by the movement of the phone without you manually using a joystick on the app so as you can see i'm just panning around i'm actually not touching anything i'm just moving the phone up down left right and you can see the video behind the little screen recording it's smooth it maintains it now, if I was to do object tracking, I've created a square or a rectangle around my own body and I'm not doing anything other than walking around. So as you can see, it's maintained that very well. It's tracking me, it can still see me, even though the lighting and the sun might be in the background behind me, it still does it very well. Now, if I go behind this board, the social distancing sign, it will cut off. And what it doesn't do is pick up again. So as I come into view, you'd have to reposition yourself on the object tracking to continue. Now let's move over to slow motion. This is 4K at double the speed. As you can see, the video quality is very clear. I'm doing this very awkward run. If I go down to 1080p, which does it up to four times as slow, you can see 
the quality is still very nice especially when you're outdoors in a nice sunny weather and uh, lighting condition like this and the slow motion itself is very easy to see now if you do go down to 720p you can see that the video quality does reduce quite significantly but it does give you eight times as slow motion than the other ones so if you are going to do this on this resolution I'd recommend to be in a very well lit area otherwise you can see a lot of blurriness Okay, so let's move over to the photos taken at 16.9 ratio. Now, the dynamic quality on these are not as sharp and vibrant as, let's say, your smartphones, but this is by no means a comparison. But the image quality, especially when I'm outdoors here on sunny weather, it's very reasonable. And I can see, like, the colors on my shirt here, for example, it does very closely match to the actual color I was wearing. Especially when you're in more of a broad daylight and the sun is shining directly at you, you will get very nice very sharp images and it's more than easily usable in your photography so if you are going to use this i do recommend if you go out in nice lit weather then you're going to get some excellent photos like here for example and even when the sun is shining directly at you or you have a specific light source or a studio light directly at you then you can get really cool images as well like this and it's very sharp and you can see a lot of the shadows the darkness in the blacks and i think that maintains it very well so, you know, I'm just walking around the park here, getting some nice shots of the pond, the ducks, the scenery, and it's very nice. And I would say that it's almost as good quality as a lot of the Android phones that I've used in the past as well. Of course, you can do a lot of post editing to make them pop a little bit more and make the colors more vibrant. But on the whole, I think it does a very good job outdoors like this. But if you was to use this indoors, then it sometimes does deteriorate the quality a little bit as you can see here it's a little bit washed out it's not too sharp the blacks are not as dark as i would like them to be and even if you take a picture of yourself indoors in low lighting conditions you can see it's not the greatest but i would recommend you use this outdoors especially for the video recording modes rather than for the photography now if you was to use this at night time here is an example of why it wouldn't be recommended as you can see it's very very dark and it's struggling to pick up a lot of the details in the cars on the streets and in the houses even though the street is well lit if you're there in person i would say that you would not need to use this for nighttime photography there is no night mode again you can try to use pro mode on this to see if you can adjust the exposure or contrast or the iso just to make the night images stand out a little bit more and you get a little bit more details in the image but again i wouldn't recommend this for nighttime photography or videography now let's move over to panorama this is a panorama of 180 as you can see plenty of detail in the landscape here i'm very happy with that and here's another 180 panorama it's at the top of a hill you can see it has curved the hill a little bit it, even though it is going very downhill but it gives you a lot of things in the field of view then we have the panorama 2x2 two two, which takes four images and stitches them together as you can see i'm at the, that same top of the hill very nice but then if i switch over to the 3x3 three three panorama now you can see that the dimensions have reduced a little bit compared to the 2x2 two two, but it's giving you a more field of view and there's more parts of the landscape that you can see in the image Alright guys, so as you saw from a lot of those shots, they're very smooth, I'm very happy with this. I'm in no way comparing this to any other gimbal of this pocket size. I think as its own standalone gimbal, it does an excellent job. The six axis stabilization on there is amazing. Now I'll have a link in the description below where you can purchase this on Amazon and also on the Feo Tech website. It comes in roughly around 250 pounds. So take a look and if you have any other questions or you want me to test anything specifically with this, then as usual, drop a comment down below. Otherwise, I'm reviewing so many cool gimbals in the future and uh, I'm sure you're going to like those ones. So make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like this video and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.